Good morning. Can you lower us a little? Hey, Viv. Can you lower us? Thank you. Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly favored? Glory. A little bit lower. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. It's still loud. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you can all hear me, right? It's still too loud. Hello? That's good, I guess. We'll work it. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly favored? This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. How many of y'all know God's on the move? <laughs> Big time. Big time. The things that we're seeing today is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, we are entering and we are approaching not only the end of time, but the end of times. There are specific things that God is predestined that are coming to an end because they're being completed. You know, nothing becomes new unless it comes to an end. Amen? So we are in a time where things are becoming the end of times. And we are approaching these end of times that have been predestined. And the only reason why they're coming to an end is because they're being fulfilled. In Ecclesiastes in chapter 3, if you'll go there with me. Everyone say end of times. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verses 1. <clears throat> Would you read it with me, please? To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So there's a season and a time for a purpose under heaven. Amen? Now, he says in verse 2, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die, there's a time to plant, there's a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from break, embracing. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away. God does it, that men should fear him, fear before him. That which is, has already been and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Again, Jesus is the holder and the keeper of all the times. He is the beginning and the end. There will be an end of time and everything that belongs to time will end at some time. In the time allocated to each individual, if there is re re 
responsibility. It is their responsibility to fulfill their call, purpose, and destiny. And this is by cooperation with the eternal truth of their timekeeper, who is known as the Holy Spirit. In other words, sometimes individuals' lives are cut short because of the enemy. Why? Because of the lack of cooperation with the Spirit of God. God does not interfere with man's free will. Amen? He is not required. He doesn't want anyone to overdose from drugs. He doesn't want anyone to die of sickness. Amen? Does everybody understand? In other words, he wants us to live the full course we have been predestined to fulfill in that time. But the problem is, is because the enemy is trying to interfere with that allocated time. So what happens? People die off. I mean, I've heard of some strange deaths that have occurred to people just standing on the corner of a street. But they walked away from God. And walking away from God lifts his protection. And when that protection is lifted, the enemy knows. And he'll go after that person before that person can turn back. It's the prayers of the saint that keeps that person. Does everybody understand? It's the prayers of the saints that keep that person protected. That's why he has us interceding. That's why there's intercessors that pray for all kinds of things. Every one of us is still here because mom, dad, or grandma, or grandpa have been praying for our blessed assurances. Amen? Or else we would have died. I died multiple times. I should have ended up in hell multiple times. But because of the prayers of the saints, it's what kept me alive. It was the hand of God that decided to protect me. Even though all those times I cried out to God. Do you remember those times? God help me. I'll never do it again. Right. But we kept praying, asking help, help, help. Why? Because there was an allocated time that we knew we had to fulfill. Even though we didn't understand it. And when you are born again in the spirit, you're no longer bound to time. You're bound to eternity. There's a difference. But see, people are still, that's why people lose their identity. Because their identity of the world maintains in time. But your identity is not of the world. You have a new ID. You have a new DNA. Everything in me and you is born again, spirit-filled believers. Following and because we feed ourselves with the word of God. And we drink by the spirit. It changes me and you. We're not designated for this time. Only to be in this time to rescue as many people out of this time into eternity. That's where the movie The Matrix is so phenomenal. It is a prophetic movie if people could understand it. It's phenomenal. They probably didn't know what they were doing. Although they might have. Because most flicks are done by the demonic realms anyways. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you turn to Acts chapter 1. So we don't want to be cut short of the allocated time. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Hallelujah. End of times. I mean, you see what's going on in the world, right? Why do we see everything that's going on in the world? All of this stuff, all of this lies and deceptions and so forth. Why? Because they know their time is coming close to an end. Everything is going to come to an end. Corruption, wickedness, all of these things are going to come to an end. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4, would you read it with me? And being assembled together with them, just as Jesus, he commanded them. He did what? He commanded them. He didn't ask them. He said, look, do this. If Jesus showed up in front of you and said, do this, would you do it? Even if he showed up in front of you and said, would you mind if you do this? You would still do it. Amen. Anything he speaks is a command. And he commanded him. He said, look it. Do not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with the water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now you got to remember something. He told around four to 500 disciples all this. He said, man, make sure you go and get baptized. I'm going to breathe afresh on you. That should maintain you for the next 50 days. 
which is Pentecost. But not everyone showed up to the upper room. 120. That's all it showed up. The rest became religious denominations. Why? He commanded them, look, you must be filled with the power and the anointing of Christ Jesus. This is not about religion. It's about relationship. You cannot cross over without the leading of the Spirit of God. You cannot hear His voice correctly. You cannot be led correctly. You will not be able to deny yourself without the power of Christ, which is required. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. See, the world cannot den deny themselves. They promote themselves. There's a difference. Because they're still eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, there's many good people and many evil people in the world. But they're bound by time. Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil brings time. But the tree of life releases us from that. When you eat of the tree of life, which is Christ Jesus, now we produce righteousness. We are no longer under the time of just good and evil. We produce righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. Is everybody okay? Praise God. In verse 6. Therefore, when they had heard, when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Times and seasons in the Father's authority. He said, man, don't worry about that. They're concerned about getting Israel all rebuilt and everything. He wasn't talking about that. He was talking about bringing the kingdom of God on earth. And he said to them, it's not for you to know these times and seasons. But you shall receive what? Verse 8. Power when the Holy Spirit has come. So I want you to understand something. Jesus was turning course with them. He said, man, don't go there. This is not about that. This is about you receiving the kingdom of God in you with power. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Again, times and seasons designated by the Father only. All seasons of, our, of purpose by the Father, he's determined a time period again to fulfill. And it's just for his purpose. Let me explain something. The seven feasts of the Lord. The seven feasts of the Lord are time sequences God has predestined to be fulfilled. Amen? Now, Jesus is the only one that can fulfill them. But each one has a time predestined in between each one to fill. The next one to be fulfilled is called the Feast of what? Trumpets. Which is the removal of the body of Christ. But those that are connected to the eternal realm. They will be removed. That's the purpose of it. In other words, we are removed from time right now. But we are in an eternal realm. In a timeless, from eternal, a timeless place, in a place bound by time. In other words, we still have to abide by the rules of time here, don't we? But in the spirit, there are no rules of time. That's why... Jesus said, I am the first, the last, I am the omega, the beginning and the end. I am he who was, who is, and who is to come. In other words, past, present, and future. Past, present, and future. That is totally different. Amen? That's totally different. You and I, in other words, when you repented, you repented and asked God for forgiveness of all sins. That means past, present. Amen? And as you get, enter into the future, because we live from the future now, not from the past. We are eternal. That's why we're eternal beings. But our body is still connected to this world. It's still bound by time. That's why it gets plagued. Amen? That's why it's a thorn in our flesh. <laughs> That's why, you know. I mean, we can dress it up, beautify You can put as much makeup on you want, but the flesh is still flesh. Ain't gonna, nothing going to change. It's still corrupt. <laughs> but praise God, by the Holy Spirit, we overcome and have dominion over that old man. Would you turn to Genesis 6?
Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 3. Genesis 6 verse 3. Everybody there? Let's grow for it. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. There were giants on the earth in those days. Well, where'd they come from? They came from... Anybody? They came from who? The serpent. Amen? Who impregnated who? Eve. Does everybody get it? And she had an offspring... One of them was Cain. One of them was what? Abel. As Cain continued on the family line, all of his family, if you follow Cain's family line, they all became what? Giants and so forth. So there were giants in those days at that period of time. Is everybody okay? All right. Let's go a little further. Verse 4 again. There were giants in, on the earth in those days. And afterward, when the sons of God, and these, are not the, these were the fallen angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. These were called Nephilim. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth because it's gone on for 400 and something years. And the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil constantly. So the earth had been corrupted. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his ways, in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was what? Corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God told him to build an ark. Amen. Again, the earth, the world system, and time was now corrupted. Even time was corrupted. And it still is corrupted to this day. That's why everything is corrupt. Amen. So the rulers of darkness, the Nephilim race, still rules this earth. We know God is the creator. He's the head of everything, but Adam at one time was the ruler, and he lost the position. And now here we are in a corrupt world, battling powers of darkness. And when God destroyed the, um, all, all that race and the earth, all of the Nephilims and giants and so forth, when they died, they became what? Demons. And that's why we have demons on the earth now. Because they're now disembodied spirits, but they used to have a body. And the angels that came into them are now placed in prison, waiting for judgment. Matthew 24. So is time corrupt? Yes. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, thir verse 36. So you must understand that the fallen race under Satan's control, the serpent, the devil, whatever you want to call him, is a Nephilim race. 
And they still hold positions in every area. In verse 36, let's speak it. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only, Jesus said. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Entering the ark is also a representation of the rapture, the removal of the church. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's go a little further. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, another one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, one will be left. Why? One will be righteous and one won't be. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the messenger or the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Now, who, what house is he talking about now? Ours. Ours. We would not allow the house to be broken into. Amen. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blesses that servant whom the ma his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him in an hour that is not aware, he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, as the days of Noah, which is a corrupt time and in, in, in this time of corruption, this escal, uh, escalated more and more and more became before God. So he's saying, look at a faithful servant will be taken out of the corruption. Does everybody understand? These people that will be found faithful will be taken out of this corruption. They'll be taken out of the corruptive time and they're connected by faith into the eternal realm where there's no time. It's a timeless place. And it's maintained by cooperation with the eternal keeper and anointing known as the Holy Spirit. That's why God granted me and you to be sealed by the Spirit of the living God. He says he's the spirit of all truth. He guides us all truth. Amen. So in this, that's why our conviction is important. You know, we shouldn't wait to be convicted. We should look for it. <laughs> Lord, please search me through. I want to look for conviction. If you're waiting to be convicted, then you're disconnected. Because connection will always want to be clean. Does everybody get it? Always want to be clean. We always want to be clean before God. Would you go to 1 John chapter 2? If you're disconnected from the eternal, you're connected to the temporary. Again, this is not a religious operation. It's a military operation from God. Amen? That's why he's training up warriors. There's too many wimps. Not enough warriors. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Let's speak it. Do not love the world. In other words, in the world system. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? It's of the world. In other words, L-U-S-T. We've talked about this before. Living under satanic torment. But I want to tell you something else. It's living under satanic time. It's living under what? Satanic time. Why? Because that time is corrupt. Verse 17. It says it to what? The world is passing away. In other words, these times are going to be passing away. The world is passing away. It's corruption. It's, and the lust of it. 
living under satanic time. But he who does the will of God abides for what? Forever. Little children, as the last hour when you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of, of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, and that none of them were of us. But you have the anointing of Christ Jesus from the Holy One, and you do what? You know all things. You know all things. In other words, now, living under satanic time or torment, it's coming to an end. Only those disconnected to the life of the lustful time can do the will of God. That's why it's so important. You must first di get disconnected before you get connected. That's why we have that disconnect prayer. It c disconnects us from all the things. You know, you can't try to get connected to something if you're still connected to something. Amen? 2 Timothy 3. Is there any sickness or disease in heaven? No. Any bondage? Nothing. So when we begin to look at the area and focus on the area of stepping out of time, that's why they're so important to cross over. Many people get healed when they cross over. That's why praise and worship. That's why it's important to get in God's presence. You know, just because you don't feel good doesn't make you sick. Somebody get it? Just because you don't feel good doesn't make you sick. What you confess is what you possess. Hello? So many times people start feeling, oh, they sneeze a few times and they've been around somebody that's sick. Next thing, the enemies tell them, you're sick. And they go, you're right, I am sick. We need to be sick of being lied to. <laughs> Verse 10, 2 Timothy 3.10, please. And then what happens? They become sick because they agreed with it. Let me tell you something. That's why the Bible says a joyful heart is good medicine. Amen? A joyful heart is good medicine. And, 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 and don't get me wrong. You're going to get challenged. Everyone that sometimes is going to get plagued with something. Oppression, whatever. The enemy is that you're going to be offended. It's what you do with it. You can hold on to it, pet it, feed it, whatever you want, treat it like a baby, you know. You can keep talking to it, do whatever you want. Or you can kill it. Dump it. Get it behind you. Verse 10. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Icium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all, the Lord did what? Deliver me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Why? Because the enemies try to disconnect you from eternity, from eternity and bring you back into the bondage and corruption of time. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So de deception is going to increase, which we're seeing. We're seeing impostors. Well, they're all being exposed now, aren't they? But you must what? Continue in the things which you have learned. In other words, put to practice in what you've learned. Knowing the truth doesn't free you. Putting it to work frees you. And be assured of it, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, again, evil people and impostors bound by corrupt time under the rule that is running out of time has risen, has risen up much more deception, strong deception, delusion, Lust, violence, as in the days of Noah. Amen? We are there now. We are in the days of Noah. Again, the next feast to be fulfilled is rapture, feast of trumpet. Second Timothy 4.
Verse 1. <laughs> Let's speak it. I charge you there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Teaching. Hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Are we there? <laughs> yeah. Many people are walking away. Some people don't even read the word of God and call themselves Christians. How can you know the promises of God and what's going on? It's impossible. The Bible says, submit to God to resist the devil. If you can't submit to God, you can't resist the influence. People say, oh, I've never been used by the devil. They don't know I'm being used right now. I've never been used by the devil. He doesn't come up to you and tell you he's going to use you today. It's the voices. It's the voices. It's the voice of the enemy that displays the conduct of an individual. React instead of respond. Amen. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers like Black Lives Matter. That's all corruption. What's the other? Uh, um, MTV. <laughs> <laughs> they got their own doctrines. Amen. You've got uh, uh, Antifa. You've got uh, Fauci. <laughs> He's got his own doctrine. Now you've got <laughs> Biden. Dear God. Obamanoids. You've got all of these corrupt individuals. You've got Planned Parenthood that portrays to do something good yet are murdering children left and right. And it's amazing how many individuals are voting and promoting for these people. It's incredible to me. Why? They are disconnected from the presence of God. The only thing they're connected to is corrupt time. And they do not know or understand. And they're being used by the devil. They work for the enemy, not even knowing. Oh, they might have big houses and beautiful things, nice cars, all kinds of stuff. Not knowing that the things that they're purchasing and promoting and voting for are coming against the kingdom of Christ. But we're there. Time, all of this time will come to an end. There'll be an increase of corruption. There'll be betrayal. There'll be an increase of deception. There'll be an increase of the love of the world. And many will lose heart and not be consistent because they've been taken captive. Would you turn to 1 Kings chapter 11? Hallelujah. You know, they try to get OSHA and all of these other organizations to promote the, uh, um, the spiking of uh, corruption in a liquid form. Uh, <laughs> and the Supreme Court denied them. They said, you have no right. It's unconstitutional. You weren't created for that. But again, what we're in right now is even some of these judges are not fulfilling the Constitution. You know, because we're seeing the powers of darkness have invaded individuals in their minds, their mindsets, and in their souls. And have taken over. This has all been pre-planned. Because they know their time is coming to an end. So everything is coming to the surface. They're kicking and screaming as much as they can. You got all the media. Look at what turn, how things, trends turn, and everything turns through the media. You know? But things are coming to an end. And verse 1 in 1 Kings chapter 11. Would you read it with me? But King Solomon loved many foreign women. Well, that wasn't a good thing from there. As well as the daughter of Pharaoh. Women of the Momonites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them. Why? Because they were the Nephilim race. Nor they will, uh, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love or lust. And he had 700 wives. Whew. 
princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Well, man, he was outnumbered. <laughs> For it was so when Solomon was old, when he was what? Old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, and was the heart of a, nor as is the father of his, uh, David. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth. Now remember who Ashtaroth was, the goddess of the Sidonians? And after Malcolm, the ab abomination of the Ammonites. Remember, um, uh, the Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, was the, uh, what Jezebel brought the prophets from. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Shaman in the abomination of Moab and on the hill that is the east of Jerusalem and for Moloch, the abomination of the people of Ammonite. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord of Israel who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give to your servant. Again, it's not always how you begin, it's how you end. Amen? You may begin right, but it's how you end. That's why we must be continuous no matter what and maintain. Romans 8. The influence is harder and stronger these days. And it's even in the schools. They don't teach doctrine. They indoctrinate. But we must know these things. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. If you love him, you obey him. To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he what also, he what? Predestined. In other words, he set you, called you forth at a specific time. And set a time for you to be fulfilled. He predestined, also predestined to be conformed to the what? image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be what? Who can be against us? In other words, we are predestined. A pre In other words, he prepared a time to get cut loose from the corruption of of time that we may walk in eternity amen we were predestined now some people think well if i'm predestined i don't need to do anything well that's baloney amen if you're studying to be a doctor and you go take the doctor exam without studying and you believe that you were predestined to be a doctor you're going to fail and not be a doctor amen same thing with an airplane pilot or anything else and if you're going to be a warrior in the kingdom of christ you must learn that's why the Lord said, I've come to equip. That's why he sets pastors and ministers and all kinds of things and, and things in the body of Christ. Things are done in divine order. Why? So you're here to learn today, aren't you? Amen. We're being trained to reign. Everything. And we must put it into practice so that when things come across your path, you know exactly what to do. And 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians four sixteen. Second Corinthians four sixteen. Let's speak it. Therefore we do not what? Lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our what? Our light affliction. He says light affliction, so don't try to exaggerate it. 
Well, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't care. He knows. Don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. And don't tell everybody what your problem is. Especially on Fleshbook. Sheesh. I mean, it's amazing to me how many people go on there. That's how they, that's how they communicate with the world. They want everybody to know how they feel. What their opinion is. And people are getting beat up and so forth because they're letting them know everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it will pass, is working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of what? Glory. So it's working for us if you let it. If you grumble and complain about it, it ain't working for you. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen. Which are seen. Those are things that are bound in time. But at the things which are not seen. Which are timeless. For the things which are seen are temporary. Because they're going to go away. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Amen. <laughs> Don't lose heart. Through the influence of the corrupt time. Amen. Things are going to work to the good. No matter what. If you're willing to follow and cooperate. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 17, 317. It says, What? Brethren, join in my and following my example, and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame. Who set their mind, their thoughts on what? Earthly things, are they eternal things or temporary? Are they bound by time or timeless? Time. Amen. For our citizenship is in heaven. We are heaven bound. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Hallelujah. According to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Again, we are citizens to a timeless kingdom. Amen. Romans 8. You know, there's so much false humility out there. You know, I, I remember I was seeing this. Well, he was actually a priest. He said he's taking the vow of poverty. I thought, what an idiot. Why would God want you to be poverty? Think about this. The Bible wants us to advance. Amen? We're to be advancing, not... The only thing that we're to be decreasing in is ourself. He's a big God. He's a big daddy. He wants us to advance, take the property, take the land, establish his kingdom. Too many people have gotten involved in the area to where false religion and false humility. Too many doctrines of demons. Too much self-promotion. And again, now we have media that can influence anything and anyone. What you put in your ears and your eyes will affect you. Romans 8.18, 8, let's speak it together, please. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are what? Not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who is that? It's us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That means this corrupt time will come to an end. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope but hope 
that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. In other words, creation, all creation will be delivered from the time of corruption into the timeless realm of the righteousness, no longer attached to the good and evil deception, but to the righteousness. There will be a setting free of that. We are entering right now a season where things are going to be coming to an end. You will see this coming year, many things coming to an end. Certain time things have come to an end. Again, the feasts of the Lord, there are seven feasts. Multiple feasts have been fulfilled. There's only three more feasts to be fulfilled, so the first four feasts have come to an end. Amen? There's three more feasts. The Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacle. So when the Feast of Trumpets comes, we're out of here. When it's being fulfilled. And only Jesus can fulfill those feasts. But again, they're predestined, aren't they? For a time and season. As you and I are predestined right now to come out, pulled out from the corruption of time into a timeless realm in relationship with Christ Jesus. I want to close at Revelation 22. We are at the end of times. And there's all kinds of times. Revelation 22, verse 12. Let's speak it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. Again, these are not animals. These are demonized people. But outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexual immoral, and murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root of and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Here we are. Getting ready. Prepared. Remember, everything is being trained for preparation. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We understand in the time of seasons we are in, and all things are coming to an end, but not us. We're eternal as long as we cooperate with you, follow your spirit, be led by your spirit, <laughs> and avoid corruption. <laughs>